just for fun, as I was right getting ready to make you this video, I thought I would do a little testing. So I literally tested all of these. And it was really fun to find out how they all compare to each other. But if you notice, I've got different size of pots. And I use different size of pots. As I was testing these three that are homemade, I used the same size pots. Okay, I was able to make, use exactly the same size at exactly the same time to get an idea of which ones worked the best. And, and I also learned some tips that I'm going to share with you and to help whichever one you have to work better. Remember, like I said, the size of the pot, 7 liter, 5.5s, and a 3.5 liter. So after all these things I've been teaching you, which one, as far as thermal mass, should stay hot the longest? The 7 liter, right? And then after that, the ter termination of how long it stays hot is totally based on insulation. The one that would naturally cool the quickest would be the 3.5. So this is what I did. I got three 5.5 pots and put them in um, the Wonder Oven, the Wonder Bag, and the Hope Sack. I put them in there. There's no peaking. Obviously nothing was frozen because I only used water. They were at a full boil and they were filled pretty much 95% to the top. Okay, so it's totally maximized efficiency wherever I could. So this is what I found out. I put one in this one, the Wonder Oven. I have to be honest, the first time I used a Wonder Oven, I was transporting it and I wasn't happy with the results. And after leaving it on the table and not touching it, I do feel like my results were because in moving it, I released air and the heat was able to escape because I didn't leave it on straight, okay? Because I had excellent results with this one. If you have a Wonder Oven, make sure that you have a system to not let it move around too much because it's really easy for this top bag to get knocked off the top and that would release the um, air. So think about that. Putting it in a tote, like we mentioned before, is an excellent idea. The next one I noticed is I did in the Wonder Bag. My pot was smaller than the space in there and I decided not to put a towel or anything around it just to see how it worked. And I think it did need to have that happen to fill up that space, remember, because air is the enemy and I had air around the pot inside of there. Out of the three, this retained the least amount and I think that's probably part of the problem. <clears throat> also with that one, I wouldn't put a big tall pan like this in there, I would get a taller, a larger size. Once you get it too high, you might have a gap in there where air can escape. Okay, so make sure it's nice and tight and you can make, and there's batting all the way around it. As far the Hope Sack, I was super happy with it. It was the first time I tested it, so I was just really excited that it, it held heat excellent for what it is. I mean, it's a homemade device, okay? Then what I did is I put the Hope Sack up against all of the stainless steel cookers. I used a 5.5 again inside of the Hope Sack and everything else was left the size obviously that they go in with the pots. Um, I left them in for 10 hours. As we talk about in class, our goal is to keep it above 165 after 8 hours. Okay? And that is for basically the 7 liter or a modified insulator. And all of them performed excellent. They did a great job. Uh, for the most part, these were losing uh, about four and a half degrees an hour, which is really good. This one, I have to say, I was very impressed with because remember, it's only three and a half liters and it was still 140 degrees after 10 hours. What I thought was funny in that though, because of the cast iron on the bottom, is that as I took it off the stove and put it in there, um, it was still totally boiling because it was so hot. Remember, maximum efficiency. You're not gonna, uh, if you're gonna have less food than that, it's gonna drop the heat faster. So under this controlled situation, that's how it ended up. Up against all of these stainless steel thermal cookers, my little hope sack over here totally kept pace with them all. What my point is, and what my goal is with thermal cooking, is to teach and empower everyone to utilize this way of cooking. It truly is something we can be using. Anyone can do thermal cooking. Whether you want to buy a more expensive stainless steel one, which is great, or whether you want to go get a pattern and make your own, or make one up yourself. Dig a hole and put a Dutch oven in it. Whatever it is, just learn and go do.